now to take this opportunity to welcome you all to worship in First Doma this Harvest Sunday morning, um, as has been our tradition uh, in the last number of weeks. Um, I'm going to invite you to turn round and wave to the people in front and uh, behind you, um, and also take the opportunity to look at the wonderful window decorations. Uh, we'll also be waving up to the camera because that will then uh, wave into the Rowan Hall. Uh, where there are people gathered and also then to those who are watching from home. So let's turn round and wave to one another a welcome to worship. That's lovely. And I hope you did have an opportunity as we were waiting for the service to start to see the beautiful window decorations. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Flo and all the window dressers uh, for all their hard work in putting together uh, this uh, harvest display for us. Um, I, I gave them a theme and things uh, that we can thank God for. Uh, so as you look at the windows, you can see uh, different depictions, some thanking the NHS, some giving thanks for the harvest, some giving thanks for communication, uh, some giving thanks um, for God's word and a whole variety of other reasons, uh, giving thanks for the bees and the flowers um, and the pollination that enables us to have this wonderful harvest. So again, uh, have a look around um, before you leave. Uh, Unfortunately, just from your seats, as we're not allowed to wander around the church uh, and uh, enjoy that wonderful creative talent that we have here in First Doma. And as a sign maybe of your appreciation, because uh, you're not be able to speak directly to the people who've done the windows, let's just give them a round of applause. Next Sunday we will have another harvest service, but this Sunday is traditionally our harvest uh, gift day, Thanksgiving, uh, and it's when we receive the offering for the maintenance of our church building. So I'd like to thank you in advance uh, for that, uh, your generosity to that fund. Um, again, uh, because of the situation we find ourselves in, the offering will be a retiring offering. So as you leave the church and you'll be moving forward this way, you'll see the collection plates um, on the tables at either side. So please. Uh, make use of those and we thank you for your generosity. This evening we traditionally would have had an on, uh, a harvest service and then gone into the Rowan Hall for harvest supper. Uh, that's not going to be possible this year so instead I have pre-recorded an online harvest service which will appear on our Facebook and church website um, and I would invite you to join with us at seven o'clock this evening for our online harvest Thanksgiving evening service. And then I would encourage you after that to have your supper at home um, and uh, to give thanks to God for all his goodness uh, to us. If you want, you can take a photograph and send it to Emma at firstoma.com and we'll put those together and show them on our Facebook page. And I've also created in the First Oma gathering page place a uh, a room called the supper room which is really um, a video chat room uh, so if you go on to First Oma Gathering Place at a quarter to eight and click on the supper room then your video uh, so you will be seen um, having your supper and it will also show anyone else who's joined the supper room and I'll be there from a quarter to eight and all we'll be doing is sharing a cup of tea and a little bun uh, over the internet and some conversation with one another so trying to simulate um, what we would have had in our Thanksgiving supper had we been able to meet in the Rowan Hall. So if that's something that you would be willing to do, it'd be lovely to see you there. And then I'll be able to see you without a mask on, which would be great. Uh, next Sunday, as I said, our harvest service uh, will be for those with surnames I to Z. Again, we're split the congregation in two alphabetically to enable as many people as possible to attend service um, at harvest time. So if you've, as you've been here, those of you who are in the church uh, this, this morning, we would encourage you next week, if you're able to, to watch online from home rather than coming in so that those with surname I to Z will get a place in the church. These are strange and challenging times, but as we help one another, we will all uh, benefit from it. 
Then just a highlight, Thursday night, our present Bible study has cont- uh, started on Zoom. Um, I'm meeting at 7.30 with anyone who'd like to join with me on Zoom, and Audrey is meeting at 10.30 in the morning. So if you would like to join that Bible study, uh, then contact either Audrey, Hodge, or myself, and we'll give you the details that you need to join with us. Those are all of our notices for this morning. This harvest season, let us proclaim God's bounty and blessing. Let us proclaim God's goodness and providence. Let all who are hungry come and eat from God's provision. Let any who are thirsty come and drink from God's blessing. Let us rejoice in our generous God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of the universe, We are awestruck before the beauty of the world, the ever-changing sky, the variety of colour, the immensity of the night sky, the delicate, intricate detail of the tiny flower. We thank you for this season when the earth, rain and sun have again performed their miracle of producing a harvest. We thank you for our food and drink in such variety and abundance. We praise you for the music of the seasons in birdsong and insect drone, in wind and flowing water, in the rustle of leaves and the crash of thunder. We thank you for the work of composers making music of all kinds to move and thrill us. We thank you for all who perform as soloists, members of choirs and small groups. We thank you for pianists and organists and other musicians who will lead in worship this Sabbath day. Though you made this wonderful world for our good, we confess that our selfishness, greed and desire for control has resulted in us treating it as our property rather than as your gift. We have denuded the land of trees, polluted the water and the air. We have failed to value and respect others. Instead, we have abused and deprived and even killed. We have failed to appreciate ourselves Instead, we have damaged our health, closed our minds, and neglected our spirits. We have even failed to appreciate you, ignoring your word, rejecting your love, and forgetting your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us, and hear us as we join together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have forgiven those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm delighted to have a soloist for our Harvest Morning Service, uh, Calvin Davison. He's now removed his mask, so you, we've unmasked the singer, uh, Calvin. Um, and he's going to lead us in uh, a song, Fill Your Hearts With Joy and Gladness. Till the 
pastures, golden valleys thick with grain. Praise the Lord for times and seasons, cloud and sunshine, wind and rain. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness, peace and plenty crown your days. Love is lost, declare his judgments, walk in all his words and ways. He the Lord and we his children, praise the Lord, all people praise. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness, peace and plenty crown your days. Thank you, Calvin, for leading us in that song that lifts our hearts to hear God's praises sung this Harvest Sunday. I'd now like to invite Richard Alcorn to come forward uh, to read for us our scripture reading, Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 29. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whoever he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces corn, first the stalk, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. Thank you, Richard. Uh, you're now in for a treat. Um, our choir aren't able to sit in our choir stalls um, at the moment, uh, but thanks to John and his uh, ability to play and sing and record on his phone, and thanks to Peter uh, for putting it all together, the choir members have uh, sung individual solos or duets uh, from home and uh, sent those through to Peter, and Peter's put them together. So you are going to get a First Oma Harvest Anthem this morning. And the hymn they're going to sing is Praise God for the Harvest of Orchard and Field. Oh 
thank you to the choir. Some of you are gathered here this morning and some of you have to wait till next week uh, because you're in the second half of the alphabet. But we really do appreciate all that you've done. And thanks again to John uh, and to Peter. So over the last number of weeks, we've been looking at things that we can give thanks to God for, and um, we've been filling in a Thanksgiving jar. And so this morning, um, we're giving thanks for the harvest of orchard and field. And here we have the harvest of orchards and field. Um, and uh, I purchased these in one of our supermarkets. Uh, and so we also want to give thanks uh, for the service of those who worked on the front line during lockdown, uh, ensuring that we had enough uh, food in our cupboards and in our fridges uh, during lockdown. So we thank them for that. And we thank the farmers who have grown uh, the fruit and the vegetables and the food that we eat. And uh, whenever I'm in shopping, I also have to give myself a little treat. So we do give thanks for chocolate bars as well. A little bit of everything does you no harm, isn't that right? But we're thinking about harvest this morning. And uh, earlier in the year, I sent away for uh, these bee bomb packs. I had seen them advertised on uh, that wonderful advertising tool, Facebook. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give those a go because it says all you had to do was scatter them on the soil and that they would um, disintegrate into the soil. You didn't have to sow them. You didn't have to prepare the soil. You just scattered them on the surface and they would break down and you would have lovely wildflowers in your garden. Garden. So I planted them in early spring and thought, oh, this is going to be great. And I waited for April to come and go and for May to come and go and for June to come and go. And there was no sign of any wildflowers. And I was so disappointed. So I thought I'm going to go away uh, on the month of holiday in uh, July. And maybe when I come back to the man's garden, we'll see some wildflowers. So I went away in July and whenever I came back, not a sign of a wildflower where I had planted them. I had followed the instructions and just scattered them on the top of the soil. I don't know whether the birds have taken them away, but I don't think they have. So I was so disappointed that I looked online at the instructions uh, onto the website and I was going to maybe write a letter of complaint because I hadn't got my wildflowers as promised. And as I was reading down, it said that sometimes it takes two years before the wildflower will take root and flower. So if you don't get anything in the first year, wait, be patient. It might come the following year. So I'm going to have to wait another year to see if I can get some flowers in my wildflowers in my garden. Well, I didn't actually have to wait that long because I'd also given a packet to my good neighbor, Hubert, and he being a true gardener, didn't really believe that it was as simple as that. So he planted his in the greenhouse and with lots of sunshine and warmth, he was able to transplant some of the wildflowers into the man's garden. So I have had uh, a colorful display from uh, those seeds and I look forward to them and to the ones that are still buried in the ground producing uh, wildflowers against the fence next year. So next year, maybe I'll have photographs to show you for that. But it takes a long time for seeds to grow. And whilst we wait, there's not an awful lot that we can do about it. Yes, we can water and we can fertilize, but the seed itself must sprout and take root. And that root must grow and a little stem needs to make its way to the surface until it's time to peak above the ground. Then we have to wait for that stem to grow and for the bud to appear and then eventually for the beautiful flower to arrive. It's the same with the apple trees. Uh, we wait for the leaves to come on the trees. Then we look for the blossom and eventually we see the beginning of the fruit. But even then we have to wait until the fruit brightens before we take it from the, the tree. So farming really involves an awful lot of waiting around, doesn't it? Whenever I talk to farmers, they always tell me they're very busy, but I think they must spend most of their time just waiting, waiting for what naturally happens uh, to take place. Now, I know that's not the case, farmers. Please don't be sending me emails or rude messages on the phone. I know that your day is uh, very productive and there's not a lot of sitting around watching and waiting. But this image um, of waiting for fruit or for flower to grow, is an image that Jesus uses in the scriptures to describe the kingdom of God. 
He tells us, as Richard read for us, that a farmer plants the seed and then he has to wait day and night through wind and rain and sunshine to see if, the, if that seed has taken root. He can't tell from the surface whether he's going to have a harvest or not. He has to wait for the first sign of that little stem coming through the ground and then watch and wait as it grows and wait and wait and wait and only harvest when the time is right. Farming is a waiting game and Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is a waiting game. We don't get instant results. It takes time and patience and the right conditions for God's kingdom to come into effect in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Are you good at waiting? I'm not all that good. How did you find lockdown waiting to be released? Did you find it difficult, stressful, anxious? But like me, in that waiting, did you begin to notice the things that were going, around, going on around us naturally? The bird song, the blossom, the long chats on the telephone or over the internet. The appreciation of those small details in life that often go unnoticed because we are rushing, rushing, rushing by. So waiting time is not wasted time, but time to allow an idea or a thought to develop and flourish. And it's often in the waiting that God brings about his kingdom. We know that from various Bible characters, Joseph languished for years in prison for a crime he didn't, he didn't commit, forgotten by all. And yet it was in that dungeon cell, in that time of waiting, that God was shaping him into the leader he would one day become, a leader who would save God's people from starvation. Or we think of Hannah waiting month after month after month after month to see if she had conceived a child. And eventually she did. She bore a son and called him Samuel. And as a young boy, Samuel was called by God to follow God in the darkness of the night. But that young child would wait until he was an old man before he would anoint King David as the king over Israel. So his whole life and even before his life began, it was a season of waiting for God's kingdom to come into effect. The people of God then waited 300 years after returning from exile for the promised Messiah who would free them from captivity. And when he arrived, did he arrive as a strong warrior ready to defeat the enemy? No, he arrived as a tiny baby, born in poverty, no grand entrance, no immediate rescue. 30 years of his life passed before he began his ministry. And then he began to reveal the kingdom of God, telling us that the kingdom of God is like a little seed planted in the ground. And we have to wait for it to come to fruition at the right time. We all want an abundant harvest and we usually want it now. Plant today, reap tomorrow. But the kingdom of God does not work like that. It takes time for faith to take root to grow and to flourish. It takes, just as the seed needs the seasons of winter and spring and summer and autumn, so the kingdom of God needs time to flourish in the lives of God's people. And so we have to wait for God's kingdom to come. We think, for example, of our children's ministry where we take a young child and we baptise the child and seek to bring it, promise to bring it up in the teaching and love of God to nourish the child. The child then comes to church and to Sunday school, to jigsaw and blast and to whatever other activities uh, that we put on for it. Um, and as it grows, we hope that that seed of God's word would flourish in their lives and that they would be, play their part in the kingdom of God. 
But one of the things that is so heartbreaking at this time is our inability to run many of our children's ministries. And it can seem that the wait for us to start is just so long. Yet we need to remember that God is at work in the midst of this waiting. He is in it for the long game. He will patiently work in the lives of those children when they're in their homes, when they're watching on the internet, uh, wherever they may be. God will continue to be at work flourishing and growing the seed of faith in their hearts. And we pray that the day will come when they too will enter into the kingdom of God and seek to live for him in this world. So please pray for our children, for our young families, and for those who um, put so much of their time and their, their effort into our children's ministry. Please pray for them all in this time of waiting. Or maybe you're someone who's waiting for the prodigal to return where a child has grown up in the teaching of the church but has wandered away, maybe even for decades. But let's keep praying for the right circumstances where that seed will begin to grow and flourish in that person and that they will come to faith for themselves and see that God's kingdom is real and is at work in their lives. Coronavirus and lockdown has provided us with an opportunity to stop and reflect on our own lives and on what's important in life, making us think about God, maybe for some people, maybe thinking about him for the first time in a long time and asking if he is relevant for their life. All churches here in First Oma, across Oma and across Northern Ireland and the UK and the world have had to stop our worship services uh, meeting physically, but we have uh, embraced technology and we have been using the internet and that has reached many, many people. So even in a period of lockdown where we feel the separation of not coming together to worship, God is able to use that time of waiting to plant seeds in the hearts and minds of those who are listening. So let us pray for opportunities to see the tender stalks of faith appear in our own lives, in the lives of our prodigals and in the lives of our community around us. And pray to know the time when we should take action and help people to explore and question faith for themselves. We also wait for God's kingdom to rule and reign in our world. We all know there's sickness, there's poverty, there's injustice, there's hatred and evil in this world. Coronavirus is but one symptom of our broken and fragile world. We've taken more notice of it because it has impacted us in such a catastrophic way. But there are millions of people in this world who are suffering because of poverty and injustice and sickness and hatred in this world. People who are Christians and people who are not Christians. But we as Christians know that there will come a time when that suffering will end, when the Lord returns. That day when there will be no more sorrow or sadness, when the lion will lie down with the lamb, when the wonderful harvest of God's kingdom will come and we will live eternally with our heavenly father forever. But until that time comes, we are in a period of waiting, not inactive waiting, but actively waiting for God's kingdom to come, watching for those signs and being ready to assist in the spiritual harvest that is to come. So I finish with the words of hymn 632, Filled with compassion for all creation, Jesus came into a world that was lost. There was but one way that he could save us, only through suffering death on a cross. God, you are waiting. Your heart is breaking for all the people who live on this earth. Stir us to action, filled with your passion for all the people who live on the earth. Amen. I'd like to invite Emma Fleming to come forward and lead us in our prayers for others. Let us
us pray. God of the harvest, we come before you today giving thanks for your provision and goodness to us at this harvest time. We are grateful for your love that not only provides for our needs, but also made a way for us to know you through Jesus Christ. It is easy in difficult days to lose focus on what you have given us. So we pray that today, as we look to your creation, a wonderful gift, that we will learn to be thankful for our world. And Father God, in these days when trials seem greater, situations seem more difficult, and our world is in disarray, we come to you knowing that you are good, and your goodness is displayed to us each day in so many different ways. And at a time when our usual ways of living life have had to change, we thank you that you never change, that you are the same today as you have always been, and that as we look to tomorrow, we can trust in you because you never let us down. We thank you too for the many ways in which you provide for us, for our food and family, friendships, housing, health, happiness, and the ways to use our times and talents. We lift you to the ways in which you remain in need of all these things. We pray for people in our community and beyond who are struggling at this time. We pray for those who have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we especially remember those who have lost loved ones, all who are facing ill health, isolation or unemployment this week. We pray that each may know supported relationships, practical provision, real hope and confidence in knowing God's strength and comfort in these difficult days. We pray for government, local and national leaders, and those with influence to exercise godly wisdom and integrity, as they continue to make difficult decisions about safeguarding health and the economy. We thank you too for those who are serving and caring for others in churches, in charities and public services in our neighbourhoods, in our schools, hospitals and nursing homes. We ask that you would give them strength, rest and perseverance as they work to support others. We ask too that they would receive all that they need to thrive as they each prepare for the winter and the upsurge in virus cases. And Lord, we offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the power of the Spirit at work within us, Others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. We ask these, our prayers, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Emma. And so we bring our first harvest service to a close uh, with that very well-known harvest hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. I will invite you all to stand and to sing along as Calvin and John lead us in this hymn.
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Could I ask you to be seated please? Again, as we've done in weeks gone past, we're going to leave the church in an orderly fashion uh, whilst John plays some background music. So I will indicate when it's your turn uh, to get up to leave. Thank you. The transept. Thank you. 